What does your watch say about you? In today's video, guys, I'm gonna go over four watches and I'm gonna let you guys know what I think about you or whoever owns and wears these particular timepieces. You gonna learn today. I want you guys to get in the comment section and let me know if you agree. But if you disagree, comment down below and let me know what you think these timepieces say about the person that owns it. Guys, I'm gonna enjoy my Duncan as I go through these four timepieces. For some reason, Duncan has been my go-to for the past two weeks. I don't know why, maybe because the price is right compared to some other places. Compared to Starbucks, Duncan definitely keeps my energy up. The energy window with Starbucks is very small. 30 minutes to an hour after drinking Starbucks, I wanna take a nap. But for Duncan, it just keeps me going. Comment down below on that and let me know which one do you guys prefer, Duncan or Starbucks? But anyways, guys, remember to give the video a thumbs up at any point. Feel free to comment, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and also share the video on your Facebook, on Instagram, anywhere that you want others to see this content. Now, let's get into the video. <laughs> so the first watch is the AP Royal Oak. This watch says that it took you months of consideration to make the decision to pull the trigger and buy this timepiece. So long that some of your friends was like, Tick tock, mother Damn. You were just on the fence between the AP Royal Oak and the Patek Philippe Nautilus. This specific person that owns the AP Royal Oak, prior to making the purchase, had the AP Royal Oak and the Patek Philippe Nautilus in their phones, looking at it 20 times a day, trying to figure out which one they should get. They also were showing it to everybody they had an encounter with just to find out which one they think he should choose. But finally, you make your purchase of the AP Royal Oak over the Patek Philippe Nautilus because you're under 45 and you love the sharp, edgy look of the Royal Oak. The people that were around you, especially the people that you asked which one you should choose, was definitely a huge influence on you picking the AP Royal Oak because most of them probably said you have to follow the common progression that most watch collectors go through. Whereas first, you collect your Rolex or a bunch of Rolexes. Then second, you go to AP, the AP Royal Oak. And then the next step is the Patek Philippe Nautilus or any other model in the Patek lineup. If it's a bust down AP, you're probably an athlete, a rapper, or think that you're some type of playboy. Don't leave your girl around me, true player for real. You live in either of these cities, LA, Miami, Houston. You still love clubbing. And you also believe that LA and Miami women are marriage material. <laughs> That's, it's just a joke, but it's true. Comment below and let me know so far if you agree or disagree. On my the second watch on my list is the Patek Philippe Nautilus. It could be the 5711, 5740, any model, but here's what the Patek Philippe Nautilus says about you. This watch says you're older or mature, most likely over 40, but if you're on the younger side, under 40, you're just an old soul. Also on the younger side, if you have this Patek Philippe Nautilus, I would lean more to guessing that you purchased this timepiece on the gray market. If you're older, I think you just have a great relationship with the AD and have a long purchase history with your local AD. Yes, if you can afford a Patek Philippe Nautilus, it definitely says that you're rich and probably old money rich. I'm really rich. The Patek Philippe Nautilus for some reason gives me CEO or CFO vibes. Just someone in the finance industry, it could be a banker, who knows, but definitely someone in finance and business. Lastly, the Patek Philippe Nautilus says that you have a big ego. Unfortunately, it's a fragile one because your ego is in your bank account. That's probably true. Now for something a little more affordable, the Tudor Black Bay 58. This watch says that you have great taste, but was on a budget at the time of purchase. It is possible though that you are a baller that's not on a budget and you purchase this Tudor Black Bay just as your daily, a timepiece that's durable and reliable that you could just wear, bang around and not have to stress over it. But back to the person that purchased this timepiece that was on a budget, this may have been your first watch. You definitely have the Rolex Mariner as the next timepiece you're gonna go after. He said, I'm 
The final timepiece is the Grand Seiko SPGA. This watch says you're a collector's collector. Pretty much saying that true collectors admire your collection and your passion for the hobby. You just have a well curated collection where there's a story and reason behind each timepiece. You pride yourself on being knowledgeable on timepieces, especially the ones that you own. The Grand Seiko owner can articulate very well the specs and features on his timepiece, like the spring drive movement and the engineering that goes behind it. Because this one in particular is limited edition. Okay. So they only make 500. But the crazy thing about this one is, um, is the spring drive, like okay. the snowflake. That's the big deal with with Grand Seiko. Do you know Do you know what that is? I've heard of it. It's like almost like a quartz and so it's a, a hybrid. Yeah. So basically, so you have like the best of both worlds of the mechanical, you know, side and the and the quartz. It has, uh, I think it's called a tri synchro regulator. Okay. So what it does is instead of you, because you know, they basically realized that the escapement was like the weakest part of the of the movement. Of course. So they developed this technology so that the that regulator is what manages not only uh, so uh, the mechanical uh, electrical and electromagnetic uh, energy from Very from the cool. mainspring you know how what is on your wrist tonight? sure this is uh, Grand Seiko SBGA 415 or 445 in the Japanese market it's marketed here in the US as US exclusive but it is not I imported this one from Japan okay uh, well, tell us about the dial Sure, it's the winter dial, and it's a spring drive movement, as you can probably see, with that smooth sweep of the second hand, yeah. the power reserve there, and it's a titanium watch, case, and bracelet, and that's the 62 GS case. I love it. If you ever come across a Grand Seiko owner that has a timepiece with the spring drive feature, trust me, they're gonna be excited to show you how smooth the second hand sweeps around the dial. You know how, if you look at a, any other mechanical watch, the second hand kind of does this? Right? Yeah. And you can kind of see it. If you look at that hand, look how it glides. Completely smooth, yeah. yeah. And the last thing that the Grand Seiko says about you is that you're well off, but you love wearing this timepiece to let other people know that you're still humble and that you're not caught up in the hype. So guys, I'm going to end the video here. Those are the four timepieces and some of the things I believe that these timepieces says about you or whoever owns and wears those particular timepieces. I hope you guys got involved in the comment section, letting me know if you agree or if you disagreed and why or why not. Guys, thanks for watching. Give the video a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and stay tuned for some more videos.